Okay, so we've been practicing lapse our packs our drills. Drills are a way for us to get our attributes aligned to our ideas or principles, right? Once the principles are there and we understand the positioning and we have the timing to release that pressure of a lapse out to a pack cell, then we can put it into cheese cell. Cheese cell is, is, is the more live training of the drill. It's a live drill. It's still a drill, but it's a live drill. But then you have to take that live drill into more of a free flow drill and then take that into, into, into sparring, into, into long range, right? So you can move in and out of ranges, right? So we're, we're, we're going to focus on the cheese cell range now. So as we're rolling, cheese cell should be a neutral position, right? You should be rolling trying to win the roll to start with. When you start rolling, start neutral, and then you start to affect some of the structure, right? So you start to find ways to control their balance. So the first thing we did in the drill, when we received the structure, we activate all our bows. So when we do cheese cell, we activate our bows on and off, feeling his whole body. So this is like a measure dome, and it's also like a, a radar just pinging. Every time it pings, I can feel where his body is, right? So I feel his tension, his movement, and whatever he does. So if he pushes too hard towards me, I can take his balance, and I can float him, then I can strike, okay? So there's loads, of, there's loads and loads and loads and hundreds of layers, right? But what we'll do first of all, we're just gonna look at some techniques which we've been doing. So we look at the lap cell. So to get the lap cell, I need his hand to be crossed, right? If his hand's not crossed, I don't have a lap cell. So a lot of guys will try to grab from here and cross. So you're doomed to fail, right? Because he's already gonna defend that, right? I need to either take his balance, so I off balance him, and then I can get a lap cell, or I use a punch to set him up, right? So this is a stun to, to affect the structure. If I can't affect his structure in his role, if I can't upset his role in position with my role, then I have to stun him and make him stutter, and then I get my lap cell, right? Now, the most efficient way to do a lap cell is to make sure you've got good position before you do it. So if I punch, I bring my hand to his elbow after the punch, the spring punch we've been doing, I come to the elbow, and with my bong I slightly rotate him off center. So now I don't have to grab his arm and do a lap cell. I just need to move his arm out of the way, and I get the chop, right? So there's loads of ways to do the lap cell. You can chop, you can punch, you can strike the kidneys, right? You can strike the face. There's loads of ways. We'll, we'll do a few of them. But the most effective one to start with, which most people neglect, is the chop. The chop is really also my secondary setup for any other technique. If he defends that chop, then I've already got the lap so again, automatically. So I'm already thinking ahead of how I'm going to control him. So if I palm strike him, he crosses, I lap out. If he blocks the second one, I lap out again, now I have the pack out again. Right? So it's all feeding into each other, right? I'm not trying to just roll and go, oh, I think I'll go for a lap out. And then he's ready, see? That's why you get these people doing cheese out like this, where every time you do a technique, the hand comes up and they're always ready. Because no one's setting anything up, right? When I do cheese out, everything is in, because I've always set it up. I never miss, right? I'm always in. Once you're in, once you get that first technique, it's very hard to recover, because I've already got you, right? And if he does recover with one technique, I'm already ahead of that technique, and now I'm back into what we are doing before. This position look familiar, right? So it's, the blueprint is always there, right? So the first thing we'll do, is feel the structure of the person, right? Link and delink. We link into them as they press towards us, we delink to float them, right? Take their balance a bit. If you can cross their bong a little bit, you've got a lap sound, right? If the person is more savvy and they control that, you stun them to make them cross, because when you hit them in the body, the person often will cross their hand. And then you've got a lap sound. You only have to just strip the hand out of the way. You don't need to make it big, right? You can just go one. There's reasons why we do bigger movements, and we'll do that later, but this one, should be like a sniper attack, right? And that's gonna be your first lap cell, okay? The lap cell chop in the first form, right? First form. The reason we do that, we sink and rise. You're linking your whole body together, do you linking and sinking? Rising, striking. So when you strike, you hear there's a slight rise and a strike. That's where your power is. That's why I can knock people out with this strike. I've had loads of times where people have attacked me and I've hit them to the temple, they just drop. Because it's not my hand doing this, is my whole body like a whip, like a chop, the whole body. So it's a very heavy strike, right? If I took a two kilo weight and hit you inside the head, it hurts, right? Because there's a kinetic force, right? It doesn't have to be a big heavy weight to knock someone out. It can be like a rope chain, right? So Wing Chun is like a, like Bruce Lee said, like an iron ball in a sock, right? On a chain, right? And you throw it and hit it and whip it, right? It's not like the iron bar. The iron bar we use with heavy strikes when we do a jam sound. But the real striking power when showing is the speed and relaxation in the strike. So when you see me do chi out, it speeds up and gets faster. Even though I don't hurt people unless they want to be hurt, right? <laughs> um, you can see the potential power, right? When I do when I do a technique, you can see the power in the technique, right? The power is exploding in the body. It doesn't look like this where people go up here or here. You know, that's not gonna work in a fight, right? You don't spiral someone and go like this, right? You know, you hit 
you, you explode your power, right? Okay, so you need to have that power in your technique. So, so roll in, either take their balance, you've got the lap, or set them up, stun them. The reason we stun them is to break the center, break the spine, control them, right? The spring, see? And then it comes back into the technique, okay? Let's go.